and Mrs. North, starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. What you wanted, Mrs. North? Yes, thank you, Miss Todd. Oh, do you have a frame for weaving? Oh, good heavens, no. But it gives me a sense of accomplishment just to think of, of all my husband's old suits I'm going to make into carpet. Oh, I know just what you mean. I've redecorated my apartment three times already. Up here. <laughs> all right, Mrs. North, here you are. Thank you. Not at all. Come again. Only when the sun is shining and there isn't a cloud in the sky. <laughs> taken out of here. What kind of a book and what was it about? About? Uh, about so big it was... I'm afraid the dining room set just has to go. No, it doesn't. It's all paid for. But according to this book, the loom I have to get to make that carpet will... See, I'm afraid we'll have to knock that wall out, too. Say, why don't you read this big book? Maybe it's all about the small looms. That's logical. You're right. This tells you how to make table mats and petty point bags. You must be reading all those books that makes you so smart. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. I'll get it. I'll get it. The book. That's the one. This book? Why, I... I must have it. Well, now, see here. I just took it out from the library. No, wait. Come back here. That's my book. What's the matter? Well, he's gone. How do you like that? Why would a young man like that be interested in weaving? 
probably wanted the book for an old aunt or something. Ants don't weave. You're thinking of spiders. Where'd this come from? Maybe this is what he was looking for. Can you make out that name that's scratched out? Uh, Potter, I think it is. Potter Industry... Potter Industrial Research Laboratory. That's about all there is, Mr. Potter. He just grabbed the book and disappeared down the hall. And you any idea who it might be? A, a customer may... Uh, excuse me. I hear the results of that fabric test, Mr. Potter. Oh, this is one of my assistants. Ernest Budero. Mr. and Mrs. North. How do you do? Do you have other assistants, Mr. Potter? Uh, yes. Uh, from your description, I would say that the young man you encountered was uh, Martin Everett. Sorry to say that Martin is... Well, I have to say, highly emotional. He's been working too hard recently, and I'm afraid he's on the verge of a nervous breakdown. Perhaps that might explain his behavior. Has he been here today, Mr. Potter? No. I haven't seen him for several days. Matter of fact, I haven't been out of the lab all day myself. I don't know where it could be. You say there was an envelope he dropped from which you got my address? Yes, um... Do you have any idea what it might be? It was sealed, and so we didn't want to open it. I have not the slightest notion. But perhaps if you let me have it, I could get it back to him and ask for an explanation. You have the envelope in your bag, Pam. Why don't you let Mr. Potter have a look at it? Silly of me. I forgot it, and I left it home. I'll have to mail it to you, Mr. Potter. And if you do locate Mr. Everest, would you please ask him to return the book? After all, it is charged to me, and I don't particularly feel like paying for it. Oh, that's my wife, Mrs. Potter. Mr. and Mrs. North. How do you do, Mrs. Oh. Potter? Well, you needn't come with us any further, Mr. Potter. We'll find our way out. I don't want to keep you from your work any further. Nice to have met you, Mrs. Potter. Good night. Okay, Pam. Now, what was all that hocus-pocus with the envelope? I distinctly saw you put it in your bag just before we left. I did, but Mr. Potter was lying. He was out of the lab this morning. He got good and wet in the storm. His shoes and trousers were soaking wet. Oh, oh Mr. North. I'm sorry, but Mr. Potter forgot to ask you for your address so he can return the book to you. Oh, of course. Yeah. Unfortunately, he's a little forgetful now and then. Well, we should have thought of it, too. <laughs> Thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Ernest. What are you doing here? You know Mr. Potter doesn't want you around. Did you get it? You promised me, and I expect promises to be kept. Well, I couldn't. The old man messed things up again. Where is it? It's right at that address. I can't give it to you. I have to give it to Mr. Potter. Oh, Mr. Potter means more to you than I do. Eve, you know that's not true. You mean more to me than anything in the world. Talk is cheap, Ernest. You promised to get me that formula. Well, I will, but you, you just got to give me time. All right. But until I do, don't try to see me and don't bother to call me. Eve, you... You, you wouldn't do this to me. <laughs> I wouldn't. I did it to Martin, didn't I? Now, Ernest... Why don't you be a good boy and get me that formula? It can mean an awful lot to to both of us. Remember, I can be awfully impatient. But darling, what does homicide have to do with a book? I don't care. I'm worried. That young Everett seems desperate. And old Mr. Potter is covering up something. I want to call Bill Weigel. Oh, please, Pam. Let's just mind our own business, huh? Just for a change. Well, all right. But still, I... 
What happened? What happened? Burglars. Why, Lamb? Jerry, that's the young man who stole my book. Must be Martin Ever. Very neatly strangled. Now may I call Bill Wigan? This is a curtain cord. It came from here. Whoever did it, let himself in with a pass key and then hid whenever it came in. Himself. Does it have to be a himself? With this thing, any strong child could have done it, male or female. It's a slipknot. It's a new variety. Hey, were you ever a scout, Jerry? Well, let's see. If I remember my yachting days correctly, it's a running bowling. A running bowling, huh? Well, whatever it is, it sure did the trick. You know, he probably came back with a book when he found the envelope wasn't in it, and then... Say, where is the book? Did you find it anywhere? No. Maybe he returned it to the library. Well, that's easy enough to check. Look, Pam, would you get me that envelope? In view of the circumstances, I think we can open it. In my bag on the bed, I'll get it. Good. Well, where do we go from here, Bill? Oh, I wish I knew. <laughs> Well, how could it be? You had it when you came in. I put my bag on the bed, and I haven't been back there since. But when I went there just now, the bag was open and the envelope was gone. How do you like that? It looks like our visitor was here all the time. While we were sitting up with the body, he got what he was after, then let himself out the back door so he wouldn't disturb us. <laughs> Very considerate. Mm -hmm. As soon as the medical examiner gets here, I think we ought to go down and have a talk with Mr. Potter at the laboratory. But I tell you, I hadn't seen Martin for several days. I wish I had. Because he was in the middle of some important work for one of my customers. Oh, it's terrible. Just terrible. He was a very talented young scientist, Lieutenant. Does he have a desk here? That working table over there is his. Whatever personal belongings he had must be in the drawers. Everest must have been killed just before Mr. and Mrs. North returned to their apartment. Now, were you here in the lab all day? No. I was out all of the afternoon. Do you mind telling me where you were? Not at all. I went out to search for Martin. As I told you, he was doing some important work for me. So we all went out looking for him. My wife, Ernest, as well as I. Mr. Potter, what about the envelope? Any idea what's in it? I told you I had no idea. But if you let me have it, maybe I can make some sense out of it. Mm-hmm. Maybe I will. Bill, I know it's being a bit fussy, but I'd really like to make sure who was killed in our apartment. Pam, what are you getting at? Well, we aren't absolutely certain that it was Martin Everest. We're only going on our description, which happens to tally roughly with Mr. Potter's missing assistant. Mr. Potter, how about your coming along to identify Ernest? Oh, well, if I... I'd be willing to uh, take on that chore for Mr. Potter. After all, Martin and I work together, too. All right, let's go. Just keep yourself available, Mr. Potter. This is no time to decide to take a vacation. What did they want? What did they come back here for? What have you done now? Silence! I told you repeatedly not to talk to me unless I give you permission. I have a great deal on my mind. I will extend that. You're not to talk to anyone without my permission. Is that clear? Is that clear? Cigarette, Ernest? Thanks, Mr. North. I don't smoke. Eh? After that ordeal at the morgue, Ernest, you deserve a cup of coffee. I could really use it, Mrs. North. Thank you. Silly in here, Jerry. Would you mind pulling the drapes? Oh, oh, don't bother. 
It's all right. I'll do it. Thanks. That Mr. Potter, he looks like something used to frighten crows. Oh, he's just getting old, Mrs. North. Of course, he's, he's always been terribly jealous of his helpers. He's been writing Martin awfully hard lately. I don't know what it was about, but Martin seemed really afraid. He certainly seemed upset when he came here today. I'll get it. Sugar? Hello? Uh, yes, a small, please. It's for you, Ernest. Thank you. Yes? This is Eve, Ernest. What are we waiting for? Mrs. Potter told me where you were, that's how. Careful? What have you got to be careful about? Martin was my boyfriend, remember? If there's any trouble, somebody might stumble onto that fact. And that I walked out on him and came to you. Yes, yes, I know. But you see, the... Uh... The project has turned out to be somewhat more complicated than we'd anticipated. And that's why I wish you'd let me proceed with the necessary uh, scientific caution. Yes, well, I'll get in touch with you as soon as everything is checked. Goodbye. Some of our customers expect miracles overnight. Ernest. Uh, Jerry and I were wondering if there could be anything personal of Martin's at the lab that could tell us something. Well, I, I do have a key to the lab, Mrs. North, and uh, Mr. Potter's not there now. Of course, it's not really... But Martin worked alongside me. He was a friend of mine. If you think it's important, why, I'd be glad to let you in. Well, it is important, Ernest. Uh, get your coat, Pam. Uh, before we go, I have to leave a note for the cleaners. Mm. Yeah, would you like to finish your coffee? No, no, thank you. We'll get a taxi downstairs. Right. Here, Pam. Thank you. I'll leave the note here on the door. All set, Ernest? That's right. Someone else went through Mr. Potter's desk. Okay. You leave the equipment on all night? Oh, no, no. I'll turn it off before I go. It used to be Martin's job. Poor fellow. He used to practically live here. You were right, Ernest. Mr. Potter is getting very forgetful. He shouldn't leave things like this lying around. Looks bad, doesn't it? Means Mr. Potter has a few things to explain. This book is one of them. Shh. Quick, put on the light. Thank you. 
I don't know what you're doing here. But I do know you'll get the end of this across your skull if you move one more step toward me. I shall have you arrested for trespassing. You have a good many things to explain. So have you, Mr. Potter. Why did you come back here tonight? To turn off the burners. A job usually performed by one of my assistants. You sure it wasn't to get that book you took from Martin, Mr. Potter? Oh, I... I thought I told you to stay out of here. Haven't I got enough trouble? Trouble, Mr. Potter? You mean like the murder of Martin Everest? Did she do it? Martin. Martin Myers. You did it. You finally did it. All these years you hated him. He wouldn't let you cheat him anymore. So you killed him. You murdered! He was my son. You mean you killed your own son? I said my son, not his. Martin's father died when he was a baby. He kept him working here, cheating him, paying him next to nothing, robbing him of his work. Everything Martin discovered, he patented under his own name. Martin made an important discovery. It was worth a fortune to whoever controlled the patents and the royalty. That's what was in the envelope. The details of Martin's process. He couldn't get it any other way. So he killed him for it. That is not true. I, I tried to get it from him, but I did not kill him. Ernest, you better get a rope and tie up your former employer while we get in touch with the police. All right, Mr. Potter. I didn't do it. Something must be wrong. You've got to believe me. That's a very interesting knot, Ernest. A running bowling, isn't it? Jerry taught me that. After we saw it around the neck of your colleague, the late Martin Everest. You better call Bill Wagon, Jerry. All right, get back from that door. Come on. I'm warning you. There's nitric acid. I don't have to tell you what it'll do to you. You shouldn't have been the one to ask us for our address, Ernest. And you shouldn't have been so familiar with the drapes in our living room. And you were a little too reluctant to search Mr. Potter's desk. All right, Evie. You're coming with me. You walked out on Martin because he refused to make money on his discovery. You got me into this, but you're not walking out on me now. Come on. And don't try to follow us. Don't move any further, Ernest. Now, listen carefully. You make any move with that arm, except to put that jar down slowly, I'll have to try to shoot it from your hand. And you're between me and the jar, so put the jar down, Ernest. 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 Look at me. I'm not afraid. I have no reason to go on living. But don't cause any more trouble than you've caused already. Let me have that. All right, Lieutenant. Take away, Mike. Oh, thank you, Bill. I'm glad you understood my note. I knew you weren't moving to any new address. Pam, you'll give me gray hair yet. Well, I'm sure that Mr. Potter can develop a good dye for you. Noisy, isn't it? I never knew the A that went into making a rag rug. Believe me, next time I'll be more respectful when I step on one. Hey, that's my good sports jacket. You can't have that one. It's still perfectly good. I can use it for fishing or something. Now, darling, you've been saying that for five years. Never mind. It's still a perfectly good jacket. Yeah, I'm going to love this carpet. It's going to have so much of you in it. <laughs> <laughs>
Mr. and Mrs. North is directed by Ralph Francis Murphy. A John W. Loveson production. Produced by Federal Telefilm. Starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning, featuring Francis DeSales. This has been a film presentation.